delight to see you all streaming in and greeting one another. So um, it's a real blessing to be here with everybody and everybody is welcome. Some of you have come back from a bit of a gap, some of you are visiting, and some of you just keep turning up every week. It's wonderful to see you all. We've had the beautiful bells ringing out, and now this song is going to ring out. Now there is a line in this song, talk about having faith. The line is, beautiful music still in the air. And actually, this is where the people can be. Okay? Beautiful music, so we are all going to make some beautiful music with harmonies rare. We're going to sing a song for the nations. Okay, anybody got something that would 
like to share that when they knew, they will look us for your love. I felt especially blessed yesterday because um, we had a cancellation, we were going to see some friends, and uh, it, it didn't work out. But at the last minute, we found some other friends who wanted to see us. And so we ended up going to Subtle, and then we bumped into some new friends. And it was really good to see uh, all these scouts and everybody at uh, Scout and Brownies and um, guys parading. I had a message from my own daughter to ask me if I wanted to go on holiday with her. So, yes, that was very surprising, so I know she loves me. <laughs> For I am Lord. And I kept singing that in the garden, I don't know what folks said, but well, I'll sing it loud and, you know, that was not right. Yeah, yeah. 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 Excellent. Yeah. 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 Excellent. Yeah. Um, yeah. I was just taking some pops and around to my son and looking down at the floor as usual, and someone said hello, and it was Ashley Lane and they invited him for coffee. So I felt very lovely with that. And then I went my daily reading. And it just said, as God speaking to you, he's very proud of you. And I felt so good. Oh, excellent. Does anybody else, anybody on this side? <laughs> oh, come on then. I'll leave it beside her. Yesterday when I was going to clean for a church in Selston, where I used to go to, uh, I decided to cut the bus because I was being lazy and God put me in that place and just ended up talking to the bus driver and I found out he was a Christian so we were sharing Christian things and we were blessed by each other and I felt that that was God telling me to be there at the right time. Thank you. Let's, uh, let's just take that moment to say thank you to God of ourselves, shall we, to say thank you for those times this week when we have known uh, that God loves us and when we have known that other people love us and seen that love in our lives. So let's just take a moment. Lord, we thank you for those moments in our lives when we know, beyond a doubt, that you love us, when we know that other people love us when we know that we are valued by you we thank you for those times when we can show love to others and show your love to others through our lives through our words through our actions thank you amen let's pray together loving god we, we have come, come to worship you help god. us to pray to you in faith to sing your praise with gratitude and to listen to your words with eagerness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Don't forget to stand and worship in song as we sing Men of Faith Rise Up.
courage to proclaim to the north and the south and the east and the west that you are Lord of heaven and of earth. Lord, fill us with courage because you are God and you reign on high.
Saviour, he can move mountains. He can move the mountains in our life, he can move the mountains in this world forever, author of salvation. Savior, he can move the mountains. Savior, he can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. Mighty to save forever. For the salvation, he rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. Open our hearts, Lord, as we listen, so we may know your so we may know you better in our lives today. The first reading is Deuteronomy on page 189. Page 189. It's Deuteronomy 10 verses 7 to 21. 17 to 21, sorry. is God of gods and Lord of lords, is the great God, the mighty and awesome God, who shows no partiality and cannot be bribed. He ensures that orphans and widows receive justice. He shows love to foreigners living among you and gives them food and clothing. So you too must show love to foreigners, for you yourselves were once foreigners in the land of Egypt. You must fear the Lord your God and worship him and cling to him. Your oaths must be in his name only. He alone is your God, the only one who is worthy of your praise, the one who has done these mighty miracles that you have seen with your own eyes. The second reading is from 1 Peter, and it's on page 1220, and it's Peter, 1 Peter 4, 8 to 11. Most important of all, continue to show deep love for each other, for love covers a multitude of sins. Cheerfully share your home with those who need a meal or a place to stay. God has given each of you a gift from his great variety of spiritual gifts. 
Use them well to serve one another. You have the gift of speaking. Let speakers and God Himself is speaking through you. You have the gift of helping others. Do it with all the strength and energy that God supplies. Then everything you do will bring glory to God through Jesus Christ. All glory and power to Him forever and ever. Amen. These are the words of the Lord. So, you've heard me say this before, there are two types of people in this world, those that think there are two types of people, and those that do not. <laughs> and I've got a bit more of a response this time, so that's good. Here's another saying that I like. My parents-in-law had it displayed on a plaque in their hall. There are no strangers here. Only friends we have yet to meet. So today we are following the theme of our core values and we're thinking about what it means for us to be a welcoming church. The words of Moses that we heard in our first reading from the book of Deuteronomy reminds us of our obligation to others. For the Lord your God is a God of gods and a Lord of lords, who executes justice for the orphan and the widow, and who loves the strangers, I think you have foreigners in yours, but strangers, providing them with food and clothing. You shall also love the stranger, for you were strangers in the land of Egypt. So we are to welcome the stranger. In fact, it says we are to love the stranger, because, get this, God loves the strangers. The book of Deuteronomy likely reached its final form during Israel's captivity in Babylon, so this message would have resonated loudly in the ears of its hearers, whilst they themselves were strangers in a foreign land. Perhaps it took this experience for them to acknowledge that God, who had chosen Israel to be his people, nonetheless loved everyone, regardless of tribe or nation. The defeat of Jerusalem and the assimilation of its people into Babylon meant that Israel felt they were not only strangers within the culture around them, but also by their folly estranged from God. Now they are reminded that, estranged once before in Egypt, God's faithful love had brought them through the wilderness to the promised land. God had not given up on them after all, because God loves the stranger. It seems to me that there are many people in this world who seem far from God, and far from the kind of person God would have us all be. There are many who feel lonely and unloved, but none are beyond the reach of God's love, and that includes you and me. And we who know the love of God are called to display it in love for the stranger. As we have received the love and grace of God ourselves, we are to share it and thereby widen the circle of God's love. How do we do this? How, if we are to be a welcoming church, do we display the love of God? We can easily take this, these questions to mean, how can we make church more attractive to those on the edge or outside it? That is a very good question, one which we should seriously think about and return to often. How we appear to those outside can challenge or reinforce people's favourable or unfavourable preconceptions about Christians or the Church. 
C.S. Lewis fictional work, The Screwtape Letters, are letters from Screwtape, an elderly devil, to a younger devil, Wormwood, on the art of temptation. Wormwood has been put in charge of a young man, the patient, whose soul he is trying to secure by luring him away from the right path. By now, though, the patient has become a Christian, but according to Uncle Screwtape, all is not lost. The patient can still be ushered away from the faith that he has embraced. He writes, <coughs> My dear Wormwood, I note with grave displeasure that your patient has become a Christian. Do not indulge the hope that you will escape the usual penalties. In the meantime, we must make the best of the situation. One of our great allies at present is the church itself. Do not misunderstand me. I do not mean the church as we see her spread out through time and space and rooted in eternity, terrible as an army with banners. That, I confess, is a spectacle which makes our boldest tempters uneasy. But fortunately, it is quite invisible to these humans. All your patient sees is the Gothic building out of, out of place beside the new building estate. When he goes inside, he sees the local grocer, with rather annoying expression on his face, busting up to offer him one shiny little book, containing a liturgy which neither of them understands, and one shabby little book containing a number of religious lyrics, mostly bad and in very small print. When he gets to his pew and looks around him, he sees just that selection of his neighbours whom he has hitherto avoided. You want to lean pretty heavily on those neighbours, make his mind flit to and fro between an expression like the body of Christ and the natural faces in the next pew. It matters very little, of course, what kind of people that next pew contains. You may know one of them to be a great warrior on the enemy's side. No matter. Your patient thinks, thanks to our, our father below, is a fool. Provided that any of those neighbours sing out a tune, or have boots that squeak, or double chins, or are clothes, the patient will quite easily believe that their religion must therefore be somehow ridiculous. Keep everything hazy in his mind now, and you will have all eternity wherein to amuse yourself by producing in him a peculiar kind of clarity which hell affords. I have been writing hitherto on the assumption that the people in the next pew afford no rational ground for disappointment. Of course, if they do, if the patient knows that the woman with the absurd hat is a compulsive gambler, or the man with three boots is a miser and extortioner, then your task is so much the easier. All you then have to do is to keep out of his mind the question if I, being what I am, can consider that I am some sense of Christian, why should the different vices of these people in the next few prove that their religion is mere hypocrisy and convention? You may ask whether it's, what, it's possible to keep such an obvious thought from occurring even to a human mind. It is, Wormer, it is. Handle him properly, and it simply won't come into his head. Keep him in that state of mind as long as you can. Your affectionate uncle, Scruton. Now, the church as Lewis describes it is more typical of the time that he was writing in the 1940s. And you might think, well, we're nothing like that now. And yes, we've done a lot to make our church more friendly and accessible. Ringing of the bells this morning, chairs, Heating, a sound system with loop for hard of hearing, coffee and hospitality, welcome signs, welcomers, and floral decorations, child friendly spaces at the front of church, yellow on blue screens, and large print handouts, a renewed focus on disability and accessibility. Emails and notice sheets keeping us up to date. And 
and an online presence with web pages and live streaming. Both contemporary and traditional service styles and activities in the week for all ages. This is mostly great and something we should work to improve. But I wonder if this is all that being a welcoming church is about. Is having all these elements perfectly in place really the thing? I've been to better resourced and dare I say better run churches with all these kind of things in spades in which I have not felt welcome. As Sam was talking about last week, these things are nothing without a welcoming heart. They are no, they are no more or less than an expression of that welcoming heart. That welcoming heart is most clearly seen in our love for one another, our willingness to love, accept and respect one another, to care deeply with the love of God, the love that God has given us for one another. It is only the love of God that will break down the barriers that we erect that divide us. If we are to be welcoming to the stranger, we must also first welcome one another. We heard in our reading from 1 Peter, above all, maintain constant love for one another, for love covers a multitude of sins. I'm tempted to say, Love transcends our petty prejudices, our self-imposed exile, our social and imagined differences. Be hospitable to one another. Be kind, looking after one another, being ready to help. Without complaining, not grudgingly, but willingly, without keeping a tally. like good stu stewards of the manifold grace of God. With what we have received, being ready to give out to others. Serve one another. So much divides us today. Social class, the generations, ethnicity, personality, disability, mental health, Differences in political outlook and sexuality. Social media drives us away from the communal into tribal echo chambers and spaces hermetically sealed from human empathy. Yet underneath it all, we are all persons known by God, whom God wants us to know as parents, our Father and to experience his love as brothers and sisters, living together, not in uniformity, but in harmony. If we are to be a welcoming church, we must operate in the love of God, to welcome one another. If we are to be a welcoming church, we must remember that we were strangers once, and if we are to be a welcoming church, we must remember that God loves the stranger and that none should be a stranger here. Amen.
to and just to share your experience of being here and what that experience has been about and taught you and what Peter's brought them about as well this morning. Does that make sense? If I see somebody on their own, I will say something because this is about welcome. <laughs> and that's not going to work, is it? Listening in. I'll just share an experience with um, Malcolm here. Um, we're both new members to this church, um, and we both come to the decision that um, you're very welcoming. Oh, thanks. Oh, thank you. Because it's great, isn't it? Because we can say <laughs> we can say that we are a welcoming church, but actually, it is in the evidence of those who come that don't know us. Yeah. That show whether or not we are. Oh, well, 
And love coming to church and you invite me very, very welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Anybody else wants to say something, share a story? Wait a minute, just because I need a microphone. I know, what do you do, you answer it. I'll just repeat what Sally Ann says. If someone, when she tra comes into church, she tries to speak to someone she hasn't spoken to for a while. And then we'll get to another one. Yeah, and that is a great challenge, isn't it? And a great thing to do. And actually, uh, a really important thing to do. So I might like that. I mean, so it, it is often, though, a difficulty where you've got to pitch it right. Because some places I've been where the, the welcome's been overwhelming. Yeah. And it gets on your nerves. Leave me alone. And then other places that, that mean, I mean, I've been to churches where they've got me. Yeah. I can yeah. understand, but. <laughs> <laughs> We, we were just saying, David in particular, was saying a uh, uh, hundred years or more ago, uh, churches were full of, of people that probably couldn't read, um, and everything that came from from the uh, the sermons and the and the, the past and the vicar was to be heard and learned. That was the only way you could learn it. But I was watching a program yesterday for another scale who was talking about her family used to be mill owners, and the mill owners built churches and chapels and their, their workers had to attend and if they didn't attend they wanted to know why and this was the only way but they had to attend we don't have to attend we do it because we want to yeah. yes uh, Amy. Thank you. 
before God to say sorry, right, to have a seat. We bring ourselves before God. God our Father, we come to you to say sorry for our sins, for turning away from you and ignoring your will for our lives. Father, forgive us. Save us and help us. For behaving just as we wish, without thinking of you. Father, forgive us. Save us and help us. For failing you by what we do and think and say. Father, forgive us. Save us and help us. For letting ourselves be drawn away from you by temptations in the world about us. Father, forgive us. Save us and help us. For living as if we were ashamed to belong to your Son. Father, forgive us. Save us and help us. And so we thank you, God our Father, that you sent your Son into the world for us. Please help us to know his forgiveness and his peace, now and forever. Amen. Let's stay seated as we sing together, as we go into time of prayer.
your screen it says logically shows what loving really means. So perhaps you'll respond to what loving really means. Lord, you show us what, what loving, loving really means. Really means. <laughs> it is God's love that has drawn us here together. Let us pray to him now. Father, we bring those places known to us where there is tension, division, argument, perhaps at work or in our family, in our community, in our churches. We lay them out before you. Help us to see with your eyes to know your wisdom and peacemaking. And Father, wherever Christians are fussing and arguing, living outside your will, or without the responsible love you teach, bring about deep cleansing, healing and renewing so that we can really be your body in our world. Lord, you show us what love really means. Father, we bring those areas across the world where there is war, oppression, aggression, injustice, arrogance. Father, wherever injustice stifles human growth and selfish ambition distorts leadership, we ask you to bring about right and good government throughout the world, born of your wisdom and humility. God, we pray you bless and protect the peacemakers, the aid workers. Lord, you show us what love really means. We think of our schools and communities. We think of all the uniformed groups, especially as we saw so many of the children and young people yesterday. It gives you hope for the future when you see them all parading along. We bring these children and their leaders. We ask you will pour your blessing out on all of these places we were just thinking about. Father, as we watch our children growing, remind us of our calling to grow more loving in the ways we deal with conflict, approach difficulties, offer support, and address the needs of those we meet. Lord, you show us what loving really means. We think of those in our lives and community who are older, perhaps have suffered losses and changes, who find every day a challenge. Father, in the places of long-term pain and sudden shock, of weariness, disappointment and fear, bring about the peace which only you can give and the comfort which speaks of hope. Lord, you show us what loving really means. And we think of those we have loved and those who we have lost, and we think of those who grieve and have to carve out a a life they didn't expect. Lord, may the physical death of those we now think of be nothing less than a gateway to that new and lasting life in your love and protection. Lord, you show us what love really means. So, Heavenly Father, we offer you today together our hearts, 
with all the love you find inside. And we thank you for putting it there, and we thank you for giving us each other in this area to journey together. Merciful Father, I accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs> So, loving God, we give you thanks today. We thank you that you will always provide for our every need. And as we give our offering to you, we remember and give thanks and ask that you will use this to your glory. Amen. Uh, that has, it has the financial account 
of the brief. It has the annual report that has been put together for our um, annual general meeting. Uh, it has um, nomination forms for DCC, Deanery Synod, and Church Warden. So if you fancy doing any of that, so PCC is like church leadership, church warden is best of all he does, and Dave does. They're the people people. Uh, Dean Rusinon is kind of a bigger picture over um, and you get to go to meetings three times a year. Don't you? It's great to talk with other people in the deanery in the big one of church um, about stuff that's happening in church. Uh, so they are there if you'd like to do any of that. Our meeting is next Sunday. Thanks, Matt. He's not even going to be here. So our meeting is next Sunday after the 10 o'clock service. We're going to have chair lunch and then we're going to have our annual meeting. So if you would like to come to that, uh, you are very welcome. Um, if you'd like to bring some food to share with others, you're very welcome to do that. And, and I'm just encouraging us to bring food that we love to eat to share with other people so that we can share it amongst ourselves. Okay, and that doesn't mean just chocolate. Yeah. But I just want to go and buy that again. Not just chocolate. Um, so that is happening next week. It's just a great opportunity to come together to celebrate 2023. To look forward to 2024. We had a great week last Saturday morning, a really helpful morning, and thank you for those who were able to come. Because actually, what we're going to do is take what happened on Saturday morning and things that everybody said. And then, if you want to pray for us on Tuesday night, Tuesday night is the night of meeting to put it all together to make it understandable and uh, directional and kind of like this is what we're going to be doing for the next couple of years. Um, and this is the direction we're going in. So, so that's what we're going to be doing. Um, Tuesday night, ready for the next Sunday. So if you want to know what we're doing next year, come next Sunday for the annual meeting. Uh, because that's where I'm going to kind of be talking about it. So there we go, that's what's happening. Uh, all the normal stuff is happening. If you want to see G1 make a lot of noise, be here at four o'clock because we've got like a social with some drumming guy coming to do some drumming with them. So if you want to come and join in, do some drumming, three till four in church, no, four till five. With pizza and G1. So for those who don't know, G1 is our youth group. Yes, G1 is our youth group. Um, so for children who are 9 to 13. Jackson's very excited, aren't you? Somebody's <laughs> probably that. Uh, anyway, all the other stuff is in your YouTube. So don't forget to read it. I've started to put some stuff in to do with the summer and what's coming up. Um, there's an update on PCC, and then yeah, so keep an eye out on those things because once the annual meeting's over, that will be full of stuff that we are doing over the summer. And uh, and I thought I'd look positive. Barbecues are back. See, that got a better cheer, didn't it? Barbecue's back to Martin's last year. So once a month, June, July, August and September, we'll have a barbecue in the garden uh, on a Sunday afternoon. So the dates for those are in the new sheet. Put them in your diaries. So you can come. Excellent. Let's sing. Let's bless each other with this, with our final song. Um, and to sing again, please.
you emailed out the annual report, if you'd like a hard copy in bigger word letter, then there's some at the back. Let's pray together. God of power, may the boldness of your spirit transform us. May the gentleness of your spirit lead us. May the gifts of your spirit equip us to serve and worship you now and always. Amen. So this day and always, go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Amen. And be God. Enjoy tea and coffee and company with one another and whatever else you do.